Welcome to another episode of Numismatic Notes with Benjamin. I am Benjamin, and welcome to um, an episode that talks about the primitive money theme that you can find on some modern banknotes. The most interesting things about primitive money have always been to me that it is frequently money that has personalities and stories, not only of its use, but of past owners of the said money. <laughs> I think that's pretty neat because it enhances the value and the prestige of the money in question. Modern money can sometimes seem so impersonal. So for me, it is very interesting to find modern money that has designs featuring primitive monies. Join with me as I travel the world and visit some countries and go over some of their depictions of primitive money. The first note I'm going to share with you is a Nigerian hundred naira. And the primitive money that is uh, part of this banknote has to do with um, a, a ring called a manila and shells. Although as I look at this note, I see cotton here. So, you know, that has to do with cloth and I see some sort of seed here. But the money I wanted to point out to you is one of them is right here under my finger and that right there is a picture of a manila and i think we can see a better one on the back of this note yes if you look in the bottom left hand corner of this note we have a pair of manila right there those are copper rings and they can be small or they can be quite large and um they held a store of value that um could pay for brides uh livestock <laughs> fines. I, it had myriads of uses. And here's another manila right here. But also right here in the upper uh, right hand corner, we see some shells. And there were notably shells uh, in use all over the world as uh, forms of money. Here in the United States, shells could be manipulated into beads, which were uh, worth a great deal when they were sewn together into wampum belts, for example. In other cultures, shells provided uh, the beads that were used to make valuable strings of necklaces. Sometimes the shells themselves were just valuable for being the kind of shell they were and being in circulation in places where they the shells were not able to be found. There is an interesting banknote of Vietnam that has salt on it, and salt, as you know, was a very popular form of barter way back in the days. But here on this note, we have the manila, and we have the shells for sure uh, detailed. The next note I'm going to share with you is from Liberia, and it is a $500 bill, and it is the recent family of $500 bills, and it has a very interesting primitive money associated with it. This is the front of the note, and you won't see the primitive money on this side. You'll see it on this side of the note. And no, hippopotamuses are not primitive money. But take a look at the seal of the Central Bank of Liberia over here. We have two coins, top and bottom, the face or the obverse and the reverse of a 50-cent coin. But we also have these crossed sticks in the middle. There seems to be a hook at one end and a handle at the other. Those are actually called kissy pennies. And kissy pennies are pennies with a soul. Yes, they were considered to be a living item. They were typically made of iron. They're kind of brittle, and bundles of them can be used to trade for your wife, livestock, things of commerce. And it was possible for your kissy penny to break. And when it broke... You had to take it to a witch doctor who would heal the penny, would braid it back together, and charge you a fee for doing so. Uh, a broken kissy penny was not one that could be negotiated. So it had the value of the efforts of the witch doctor as well as the iron content, as well as the respect the people gave it. And I should have gotten some of my kissy pennies out because I have two neat kissy pennies in my collection. One of them is a regular kissy penny and one of them is a broken one. That has been healed by a witch doctor. So here we go. A second form of primitive money. The kissy penny. The next note I'm going to share with you is from Seychelles. No I didn't say seashells. I said Seychelles. And you're not going to believe how I used to pronounce this country. When I was but a child. I pronounced it Seychelles. And I don't know why. I always wanted to visit this nation. I love the. I love the plant and the animal life they show in their notes. This one has a offset register that's a turtle. 
I especially like that. But if you take a look on the back side of this note, you can see that we have a series of shells up here that may have uh, something to do with some primitive money. They look to be a type of cowrie shell, but they have special markings on their shell. The next note I'm going to share with you is from the St. Thomas and Prince Islands, or as they're called now that they are no longer a Portuguese colony, um, St. Tom e Principe. It's a lot easier for me to say St. Thomas and Prince. But uh, this note has a bunch of bananas and uh, Ray Amadour on the, this side of the note. But on the back side of the note, they have a gentleman who's hacking off cacao pods off of a tree. The cacao pods themselves were not necessarily a form of money, but the beans inside, which could be cured and become chocolate beans, were a very prominent form of primitive money here in the New World, and especially in the Aztec and the kingdoms that make up the modern country of Mexico. They even had counterfeits. They had little bean pods that uh, were made of mud <laughs> to try to trick the average member of the public. And with their money, you could sit there and you could spin the pods or you could eat the pods. So there you go. Moving on to Ghana, I have a couple of notes from Ghana I'm going to show you. This is a five studies of Ghana. And on the back of this note, we have the primitive currencies of cowrie shells and cacao pods right there. And of course, there's modern money gold. And then in the background, we have, you know, some offshore oiling stuff. But uh, the next note I have of Ghana is just to indicate just how far Ghana has taken their primitive money. Um, you're going to look and look and look and you're going to see a young man with a braided hat on here and you're going to see some galosh work and you're going to see the arms of the nation and you're going to see the denomination and on the back you're going to see people working in construction and they seem to be working with some sort of a cement preparation if you ask me. But what you're not seeing is a primitive money unless you focus on the denomination itself. Uh, Ghana uses the seti, and a seti, um, students, is the word for cowrie shell, or the shell that was used as a form of money in Ghana. I think that's fascinating. Um, I hope to find more information on that, and whenever I do a video that details a specific note, and not just a group of notes, I can be more forthcoming with information. Ooh, moving right along, I now have just three countries left, and one of them is Biafra. Biafra was not a country very long, but it does have meaningful banknotes. Um, its early banknotes were pretty simplistic, as you can see here. Uh, looks like there's a watermark as well as uh, lathe work as the main form of security. When you turn this note over, what do we see surrounding the denomination over here? We see some more of that manila that we first saw on the Nigeria note. And... Makes sense, doesn't it? Since uh, Biafra was a breakaway part of um, Nigeria, I believe, at one point. Now I'm moving to Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea has beautiful, beautiful banknotes. In this case, I have a five kina here with a splendid bird of paradise, which is sitting astride a spear and drums, both of which could be used to... Um, I'm, both of which could be used for trade and which carried a high value in the society of the Papua New Guineans. If we turn the note over here, we can actually see some examples of beads that were prominent in the trade within the islands. We have a mask here and we have beads and pendants. On the tin kina, which also has the same emblem of the bird of paradise, in this case on a polymer note, we have showing on the back of this note feathers from the bird of paradise and teeth of the boar, which not only conveyed status to the owners, but were highly valued and very expensive within the local economy. And the final Papua New Guinea note I'm going to show you repeats the bird of paradise with the spear and the drums. But on the back, it details the shells, the same cowrie shells, maybe a little different breed of cowrie shells, but similar to the cowrie shells we see on similar banknotes from Africa. There's also a pig head there. And I don't know, do you see this work here? 
These designs look like they would make amazing tattoos, <laughs> which could also convey status on the owner of the tattoo. And finally, I'm going to share a note with you from Nepal, because like alluded to in the Papua New Guinea um, notes, the bird of paradise had feathers which were so valuable and pricey that um, even around the world, the kings of Nepal, back when they were a kingdom, still wore crowns that had plumes of the, the bird of paradise, the same bird of paradise we see on the Papua New Guinea notes. In fact, when this king uh, came to power, one of the gifts of the United States was several bundles of bird of paradise feathers that we just happened to have extra lying around in... Um, Oh, in our museums and our, you know, historical departments and, you know, that we had confiscated through airport Caesars and such. But as a nation, we gave them as a gift to this new king. I think they were well appreciated. It's not every day that you can negotiate the value of a bird of paradise feathers. These are just some of the many primitive monies and the themes of primitive monies that can appear on banknotes. And I would dare say that in any nation of the world, there might be little tiny themes of things that were used in trade or things that were used to represent money or things that were in fact money but would not look like that to the modern eye. I encourage you to take a second look at your coin collection, I'm sorry, as well as your banknote collection and see if you don't have any notes that have a primitive money theme. Please click on the information at the bottom to leave me a message that tells me about the primitive money notes that you have or the questions you have about primitive notes. Please click on the like, uh, subscribe to my page, and um, ask your questions. I want to thank my, um, I want to thank the, uh, subscribers of my page. I'm up to 188 and I'm really, really excited to provide you with more content that's informative and allows you to know a little bit more about a banknote that you might have in your collection and have had some time. I am Benjamin. Have a jewel of a day.